to go outside. Oh, you do, do you? All right, let's go out. It is a beautiful fall day in Maine. Garden season is coming to an end. I saw frost yesterday. I was like, I was so sad. I've had such a good garden season for the first garden season at my new house here. I've wanted to do it year in and year out. There were some old garden beds here. They were just a mess. And I dumped old dirt into it when I dug the trench to drain the yard off and make things a little better. But I decided this spring that it was, it was time to have a garden. So cool. <laughs> I'm Zachary Fowler and you're watching Fowler's Makery and Mischief. Yeah. Time to have a garden here. When I used to live up in the woods before History Channel's Alone Show, I had all kinds of beautiful garden beds up there. And I had taken the soil from the land and, and mixed it with our own compost and each year built another raised garden bed with our compost and grew beautiful vegetables up there. And I thought, hey, we're doing all these catch and cook videos. Let's build a catch and cook garden. Do a catch and cook with one of those tasty little guys over there to celebrate the end of the first catch and cook garden season. It'll be like the first catch and cook I've done in my yard. Oh wait, not the first catch and cook. There was actually a woodchuck that uh, met its end and the girls actually really liked it. We had a good meal out of that one. And now here we are after an entire summer of building the garden beds, having to be out here and weed them, realizing that uh, putting the plants in after they were kind of stifled in the sunroom and putting them in at like a month late really ruined my uh didn't really ruin it but it, it 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 reduced the lack of produce that i actually ended up getting this year we did really good on the lettuce we did really good on the kale i mean those are the easy things but when it came to uh the peppers i got tons of these pepper plants and oh there's another pepper right there we can use that for today's catch and cook look at that so for next year the garden beds are all built i can do so much better and i'm working on a greenhouse so I don't have them in my front sunroom and they end up uh, stifled and not getting enough light. And they will go right from that front sunroom when it starts early in the spring and the light is coming in there and I can heat it nicely to right out here as soon as it's cool enough or as soon as it's warm enough that they won't die. And that brings us to today's sponsor, Jackery. Jackery Explorer 1500. She is a beautiful little power pack with solar panels. You can hook up to four panels and it's great for building off grid. So instead of running a whole bunch of extension cords from my house or when I'm out on an adventure and I need power to power my cameras and all of my adventure gear so that I can bring you guys the best videos possible, power packs are the way to go. This thing can run table saws, skill saws, pretty much all the contractor size tools that you might want to use to build an off grid home. So whether you're outside glamping like I do sometimes, or you're charging your cameras, or you're camping with a family and you want to sit there and, and have a TV and a movie and be ridiculous. <laughs> Sounds so ridiculous, but you could. You could. I brought the Jackery out yesterday at 60% and plugged it into the solar panels at like three o'clock. And this morning it was still sitting out here because it wasn't raining. I had forgotten about it and it was fine from the dew and uh, it, I actually had a full charge on it from that couple of hours of end of the day daylight and now I'm able to use it to build my project. I've only used 8% of the power so far this morning. She's not going to be charging all that quickly because it is super overcast. But I was able to do with 8% of the power, cut all these boards, frame this all up, screw it all together. And be sure to check out Jackery's Amazon Prime Fall Sale, October 11th and 12th, to save up to $1,000 on power packs and solar panels. Check out that link in the description below and get Jackery to power your adventures today. In the end, I'm actually gonna move it over there where the ducks are. The, half of this is gonna be garden and starting stuff. I'm going to do some Swiss chard in here and stuff for the fall and the springtime. The plants will get moved in and then I'll use these last two bays to have the ducks in so this winter they can be in there. The ones that we are keeping for eggs outside of the couple that we will eat here and there. 
I did like a Thai chili hot pepper here. I'm gonna use that for cooking up our duck today. Is that a habanero? See, every time I come out here, I'm like blown away. Because we put so much of it in so late, so many of these things didn't do anything and then all of a sudden they did at the weirdest times. So we got the cauliflower and it didn't really head up all that well because the plant went in so late. We didn't transfer them quick enough and get them out here fast enough. The broccoli, some of the plants like bolted instead of actually growing where they have like the littlest pieces of broccoli instead of giving me a big head because it matched the, the, the daylight hours, the right daylight hours and it was in the garden beds. Oh, still so good. Got a nice head of cabbage right there. It's time to pick that. Maybe we'll make a little coleslaw with that today to go with our duck. Something cold, something warm, something juicy. The corn turned out pretty good. We ended up eating that all with the girls pretty quickly. And what we didn't eat, as you can see, we do have a garden problem. There's been some deer out here and some woodchucks. Once again, we might have to do another woodchuck catch and cook. I think uh, next year I'm actually going to do a deer fence around the whole area and have a nice little gate at the front that I can go in, be able to drive the truck out. My biggest failure has been the tomatoes. I did such a beautiful job with them, but the strings and poles and frameworks I meant to hold them up with all collapsed or broke because of the sun destroying the string. We still got a ton of tomatoes, but we're also wasting a ton that we could have been turning into sauce. So let's take it back to the beginning and I'll show you how I built this in one year. First step was easy. We needed some wood to build the raised beds and I uh, didn't want all of these old poplars and stuff that were not really good for firewood and they always fall over when the wind blows too much. This would also provide me with some more space on the north side of the garden to put a food forest in, which would consist of some nut trees, some apple trees, and other things like that that just produce each year automatically. Once we had the materials I needed to rent a tractor, this little mini skid steer was unbelievable. I was able to move the logs around, shovel up these old garden beds, and move all that topsoil into our garden soil from the old beds. Even leveled some pieces of my yard so it was a little bit smoother, drained better. In the end, it took me like two days and I built 10 garden beds with all of the fill from the old garden beds, leveled several spots in my yard, and I was so in love with it, I went on Facebook, and bought a little Kubota. After filling the raised beds with all that sod and old garden beds just full of weeds, it's not that great to plant into. So I purchased a couple yards of really rich composty soil and dressed the tops of the beds with about four inches of that and that's what we'd be planting into. Owning a tractor has always been a lifelong dream of mine and I am loving the little Kubota. It doesn't push the dirt around bulldozer like as well as that little tiny skid steer with the treads but the backhoe bit is so nice to be able to dig deeper holes. I got a thumb that's welded onto it. It gets in the way a little, so I gotta figure out how to remove that when I don't wanna use it. If I hadn't rented the mini skid steer and purchased the Kubota, it would have taken me a couple months to do this project and it never would have got the garden beds in this summer. Once the garden beds were all built, I made some stakes and pounded those in around the raised breads to ensure that during the frost, it wouldn't push these things all apart and ruin everything. But of course, the biggest reason I was able to get this garden in this year was Sarah. The two of us labored at this for about a month and a half, getting the plants in, even though they were late and they were a little bit stunted from being in the sunroom. After a little bit of shock time, they started to take off and we were having a nice looking garden popping up. Whether you're buying plants at the store or planting from seed, getting out there and getting your hands dirty is just so rewarding. I didn't used to think so as a kid, but now that I get to share this with my daughter, I can see what my parents were going for when they taught me how to garden as a kid. And I don't resent so much anymore that they made me weed two rows a day in the garden. There you go. Watering takes a bit of time every morning and every evening, and you gotta make sure you soak it good and deep. But there's something so special about being out there and 
seeing your plants come to life and watch them grow and take on that new shape of whatever they're turning out to be. And I do quite literally mean whatever they're turning out to be because when we planted everything in the garden, I lost the majority of the tags that was on things. So who knows what pepper is on that pepper plant. We did end up buying some plants from the store as well because all the plants that I started in the spring were only enough to fill about six of the 10 garden beds we built. A good part of the base soil for these raised garden beds actually came from the front of the house. Sarah thought it would look nice if we built some flower beds, and man, did they turn out nice. Once the seedlings and the sunroom were all done and planted out into their garden beds, I had a little bit more space and tried my hand at making a little self-watering herb bed. It didn't work out so well. Things grew really quickly, but there wasn't enough sun when it became too high overhead for summer, and we got aphids. I bought a bag of ladybugs on Amazon. Look at all that. The ladybugs did an amazing job and cleaned up those aphids in a matter of a couple days, and then I have no idea where they went to after that because they just disappeared. But this gave me back my sunroom aphid free and I was able to use it to save a couple other office house plants. Couple herbs and spices, purple basil, take some of this stuff with us. Beautiful purple pepper. So these are getting kind of crazy. Husk tomatoes. A lot of it flowered out, but because this was buried in the shade, it, it, st it slowed down. That's celery. Here is a leek. Despite getting some of the plants in late, every single one of our meals has had vegetables from the garden in it, and we've been able to do so many awesome catch and cook videos, Sarah and I, and some new recipes like the squid ceviche I did with God, Ace was Again, amazing. With rig. Look at all this stuff growing. And what is this? Well, it's a uh, Swiss chard, so we'll put some of this red Swiss chard in there for some green and some color. So many fresh vegetables going on there. Squid. Ceviche, so it's like basically a fresh salsa. Mmm. Our homemade salsa that Sarah made from the garden. We gotta do this more often. Mm. Sarah and I also managed to process and can about three gallons of tomato sauce, maybe a bit more than that. Not as much as we were hoping for, but with some of the late started plants, it was a pretty good yield. And the canning takes kind of a bit, but what a reward to open up your own fresh can of tomato sauce in the middle of winter and it tastes like summer. I'll keep them busy while I snag one. Now as much as I do catching cooks and things like that, it's not, it never gets easier for me. Like, I don't feel like, oh, yeah, you know, food and like, like right at, not at least at that moment when I'm harvesting the life. But as soon as it's past that point, I'm like, mm, my tongue starts to water and thinking about the delicious, yummy things I'm making with it. And I think that's the importance of it. Like, you still, you value and people miss is like the people that are like, oh, don't do that. And like, you should, why, why don't you just like, get your cheeseburgers at the grocery store like everybody else instead of you know harvesting your own food and things like that or raising your own food and harvesting it that's awful is, is they don't get like as a or either a hunter or um, a little bit of this farming thing it's like i value these animals more than you can imagine does that make sense yeah Bye. So these two guys were the first ones we had and I promised a little person when we hatched them and they were the only two we had that they would they would remain the patriarchs 
safely safe from the dinner table. So we gotta pick out somebody besides those two. This guy. And that's it. Just a quick ring of the neck. It's super humane. I like this so much better than like putting them in a cone when you're doing a whole bunch of chickens and chopping them and it's a big mess. I guess part of that is like the if you're draining them of the blood, it's supposed to be better. But uh, if you're doing one animal, ring its neck, it doesn't make a giant mess. And then uh, you want to keep it still and let it settle out so that um, it's not flapping around and bruising it and hurting the meat and things like that. After a couple seconds, it's time to pluck and make a yummy, delicious dinner. Good morning, I thought, hey, I could cook that duck in the backyard, or we could run up to Moosehead and elope. We thank you today, um, we thank you for today. We invite your Holy Spirit to work here in our hearts. Give us eyes to see you and ears to hear your voice. Thank you for the example of marriage, and help us see the value of the covenant relationship that you want to have with us. Amen. There's a quote that says marriage is a relationship in which one person is always right and the other is the husband. <laughs> I want to talk about <laughs> a little bit of the importance of marriage. Uh, marriage was established by God and it's a picture or example of God's desired relationship with us. I, Zachary John Fowler. I, Zachary John Fowler. Take you, Sarah Poole Norwood. Take you, Sarah Poole Norwood. To be my wife. To be my wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. For better, for worse. For better or for worse. Rich. To love and to cherish. From this day forward. From this day forward. Until death do us part. Until death do us part. I give you my promise. I give you my promise. I, Sarah Poole Norwood. I, Sarah Poole Norwood. Take you, Zachary John Fowler. Take you, Zachary John Fowler. <laughs> to be my husband. To be my husband. Every time I see this ring. I'll thank God I'm yours. I thank God I'm yours. Every time you see this thing. Remember how much I love you. Remember how much I love you. For as much as Zach and Sarah have promised to be faithful and true to each other, and have witnessed the same before God, and by giving and receiving rings, now therefore, in accordance with the laws of God and the state of Maine, I pronounce you husband and wife, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mark 10, verse 9 says, Therefore what God has joined together, let no one separate. Zach, you may kiss your bride. There's our wedding bands. It's official. It's official. We're married. I asked Sarah Sunday to marry me, and it's been a year, and we thought, uh, why waste our time any longer? And uh, we pulled the trigger. We're up here, and we're enjoying our honeymoon. And thought you'd bring you guys along for a little piece of it. Just a little piece of it. I'll cook the duck for you. And, uh, you know, maybe Sarah will take a nature walk. And we uh, got rid of the hammocks. I threw those in the trash. Just no more hammocks for us. <laughs> we're all done with the hammocks. And uh, we're glamping. Or uh, we'll have to pick out a tent, right? And then uh, we'll go on from there. We're pretty excited. It's, uh, I don't know, almost still does it. Does it feel like it's even hit you yet? Do you feel like Not yet. Mrs. Fowler? No. Mrs. Fowler? No. Mrs. Fowler? <laughs> yeah. So, so that's Mrs. Fowler. We haven't told anyone. Yeah, we haven't told anyone. So this video is kind Except of an... for all my friends. This video is announcing... Should we hide? So my parents are coming up Friday and... We should hide the rings and Should we should hide the rings and watch the video? And just like, like, blah, surprise! <laughs> And just sneak them on right and, before this part. And sneak them on just before this part comes up in the video? Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. This sounds fun.
Such an adventure. We We've... can get their reaction on next week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's too bad I can't put it out in the video and then get their reaction on next week's video. So now begins a new adventure for us. And uh, you'll probably be seeing Sarah in a lot more videos. I'll still need my man time, so I'll have to like ditch her and leave her home with our brood of uh, brooding children as they turn into teenagers. All girls. All girls. Oh, I'm so screwed. I'll make you your favorite coffee. This is your first cup of married coffee. Does that feel <laughs> like it's a special milestone to a you? A real cup of love. A real cup of love. Um, I think while I was talking, we boiled off the majority of the coffee. Oh, no. But, uh, so I'm having espresso, <laughs> and you're going to have a latte. Sarah likes her coffee with her first cup with a little vanilla, a little stevia. And almond extract. This really is good. This is like bulletproof coffee recipe here. And then we put a little bit of, of butter. And oh, we need heavy cream. Heavy cream from the cooler. This is where you gotta be careful. You don't wanna put boiling stuff in a magic bullet and straight up blend it fast and just leave it going because it can actually, because of the pressure and the friction can bring the temperature up and it can come to a boil in here and explode. I did that one day with making mud water, um, which is like a mushroom type tea stuff that you can get. So good for like when you want coffee in the afternoon but it's too late in the day, but it's uh, really good for your brain and all that stuff. So just small after you've put brand new boiling coffee in there and you got yourself the most delicious coffee thing ever. There you go, Mrs. Fowler. Thank There's you. your first cup of married love. So yeah, that's the news. We got our coffees. We're up here in the Moosehead Lake area. You got your hunting orange on to stay warm and uh, I'm gonna cook you guys a delicious feast from the Catch and Cook garden. I brought all of this up with me. I got Swiss chard, rosemary, basil, and a little cabbage salad. Uh, I found these the other day, didn't even know those were in there. And some habaneros, I think, thyme. So this is gonna make for a uh, leeks and onions, lots of tomatoes. I'm just gonna make a really nice Dutch oven meal. If you haven't ever made something in a Dutch oven, these things are awesome. So we're gonna have a little bit of quiet times to ourselves, enjoy our uh, marital bliss out here on this beautiful God's creation up here in Moosehead area. And then I will uh, start on a nice little feast for you guys and show you how we cook our wedding day after duck. Oh, look at that. Woo, these are gonna be the best breakfast sandwiches I ever made. Except for their ham and not bacon, but that's okay. Beggars can't be choosers. Oh, where's that egg, where's that egg? One more little pinch of the truffle salt, and ooh, la la. Breakfast sandwich magnifique. Breakfast is ready. You sitting down by the water? Yeah. All right. Beautiful day to be married. Dear Diary, I read that 
153,237 people got married last year. Now, I don't want to start any trouble, but shouldn't that be an even number? So according to Minister Garrett, when people are married, one of them's always wrong, and the other one is the husband. So that leaves us with 2,076,618.5 wrong husbands running around out there screwing things up. And according to a 2010 survey of 100,000 men here in the U.S., 37% of them have the surname Wong. So does that mean that 37% of husbands are doubly Wong? All right, time to get on the duck. Let's see. We got the cast iron pan. I think I'm just going to coat this with some olive oil. It had gotten pretty crusted up, so I had to take and clean it all before I came out here. I haven't used it in a while. So I ruined all the seasoning, and this is definitely not the way to re-season. If you want to season it all good, you'd want to heat it up and let the oil go into it, and then heat it up and oil it again. But we're going to be cooking a duck in here with lots of... Uh, vegetables and then this apple cider and so that cider and all that stuff and the caramelizing and it's just going to strip the pan again kind of back down to its bare and it'll need to be cleaned and then seasoned again it's easy to season a cast iron pan and then you're using it to fry things up with you don't cook pasta or something like that in it with water and ruin the seasoning each time but the dutch oven you use it with any sort of liquid it strips your seasoning out of it and you're back to square one all the time but it does such a beautiful job with being able to put the coals on top and cook something from as if it was in a uh, oven or you could even cook something like a pizza with coals on top and make a delicious pizza. So good. Sharpening before we get going here. So even though this is called the Bushcraft Chopper, the high carbon means it stays really sharp very easily for quite a long time. But it's not so good for chopping trees and things like that. I make little chopsticks, things like that out of them. But uh, it's not. It's more of a culinary tool. And what a culinary tool it is. I'm trying to be fancy. I don't know. I've seen people that are like, but we're just all about making the yummy. Well, how are we going to start with here? We'll probably do a bed of a bunch of vegetables and layer it with some herbs and things in there. And then we will add the duck and then we'll add another layer of all that stuff over top. But, ooh, I almost forgot about this. We got some yummy, yummy mushrooms. This is gonna be good. And my carrots didn't turn out so good, so I also brought some regular carrots. But the rest of this, this whole bounty, is from the Catch and Cook Garden. I think I'll go with carrots and potatoes on the bottom as well. It's a kind of important. Ah. I have a good base layer. All these mushrooms. Ooh, I love shiitake mushrooms. Those are one of my favorite, 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 favorite mushrooms. Just lay in some of our thyme, not even stripping it off. A nice shallot green onion of some sort. Spicy guys at the bottom. Let's uh, give her a little nibble. Whoa, that's hot. Whoa, that's some good heat. Whoa, wowza. Whoa, wow. I just like, I was just gonna have to. I did not expect that. I feel like I just did the one chip challenge. Whew. Okay. That's some heat. I think. Oh. Got the hiccups. I grew that. That's awesome. The heat is pretty, pretty awesome. Okay, we're not putting too, too much of that in there. Pepper, a little bit of salt. Celery's looking a little on the 
wilty side. A beautiful duck is ready to go. I did go put it in a salt brine for about seven hours and then rinsed it and put it in the bag and brought it with us. Salt and pepper. Just nestle it right down in with all that delicious stuff. And we're just gonna pour in a bunch of apple cider. This is the cider that we made ourselves at home. We made about 14 jars of this. And the kids have already drank 10 jars. <laughs> it's like, this one's for me and my duck. And a little bit of this. This is the kimchi powder. I love putting this on stuff. It's so tasty. So this will have a give it that little kick. This is more of a peppery flavor than it is a peppery hotness. The rosemary, I'm just going to put that right on top. These cherry tomatoes and stuff will just go straight in their hole just to bring juice and delicious life. I'm just going to put a whole Thai chili right on top. I'm just going to throw some of that Thai basil in there. A little bit of oregano. Oh yeah. This doesn't that just look delicious. No sign of the duck except for the neck sticking up a little bit there. There we go, a nice slow simmer. We don't want the water boiling over and spilling out. That's how you end up with a burnt bottom. And the slower the cook, the better. So we can really take advantage of that salt brine that I had that in for six hours and get that the most flavor possible. I want it to bubble up enough, kind of like a perk pot, so that it's bubbling up and steam is collecting on the top of the lid and then raining back down through and carrying the juices from all of the different herbs and spices and vegetables around the duck in a circular, just bathing it back in flavors and that cider and the sugars from that cider coming up and just dripping back down over the whole thing for as long as possible, as long as we can hold off until it's cooked. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. So I was looking for some trails, but I can't seem to find any trails. So I'm just walking in the water along the shore here. It's really beautiful. There's all kinds of driftwood. Tons and tons of pieces that I would take home if I could. Definitely enjoying this. I've been looking for crawfish. You're mine. You're mine. I got him. <laughs> Ow! He's biting me. He's so tiny. Wicked cute. Looks like a little tiny lobster. That was fun. Kind of like crab hunting. I think we'll let him go because he's really too small to eat. We get so wrapped up in our day-to-day -day lives just running around and running kids all over the place and working. And if we just take time every day to remember that what we need to feel better is completely surrounding us. Catch some crawfish. It's, fun. it's been about three hours. Sarah's going to want to marry me all over again. What the? Foot. <laughs> I uh, take the foot off. You should have done that before. <laughs> Look at that beautiful tender. Falls right off the bone. Nailed it. Oh, roll her over. Oh, it's just falling apart. I don't even know why I bother to get the knife out. This meat is just... Coming right off of there. Taters and tomatoes. Whipped up a quick batch of coast lava from one of our cabbages out there in the garden. A little warm, a little cool, a little bit of something awesome. Here you go, hun. I can move the flowers. Put those down. You're bouquet looking good still. We gotta see if we can dry that and preserve the memories, huh? Mm-hmm. Mm. This is cool because it's from both of our gardens. Yeah. 
all of this. Mm -hmm. What a culmination of everything we've done this year. The gardens, all of it. Cheers with our waters. <laughs> bugs in it? Yeah, there's bugs in it. I had this set out special. for- Special. Yeah, so special. I had this set out for you for about like an hour now. Laura, thank you for this year of gardens and plants and adventures and, and uh, getting married. In Jesus' name, bless our marriage. Amen. There's a little bit of feathers on the outside of the skin. You gonna eat them? There's some other people that have been showing up here now. Everybody's getting closer to the weekend. And they're, uh, we told them they could take our spot because we're leaving a little bit after dinner. Gotta head back to that ed so edit. Oh, good. You liked it? Mm-hmm. Mmm. That duck is amazing. The vegetables. I don't know if it's the cider or the tomatoes and tortillas and carrots. The sweet and spicy. It yeah. There was one. Um, I put one whole habanero, or actually a half one, sliced all up in there. You could flavor it, right? Well, I'm gonna turn off the camera. We're gonna enjoy our marital bliss. I think this was pretty fun. Like, it was kind of a really neat aspect for us to go from planting the garden together in the spring, going from a seed growing our relationship as we worked on things together and started making YouTube videos and, and having adventures together to ending it with our harvest and our getting married. Mm. I love you. <laughs> I love you. Forever. Mm. I'll see you guys in the next one. Fowlers, Fowlers. out. <laughs> That's pretty cute. I meant to bring your EpiPen. That would be awful. <laughs> be a tragic ending. Some final thoughts on the Jackery. It says 0. 0.2 hours of runtime left on it at 26% because I'm running the air fryer right now. So it's got more than enough power to run the whole glamper. We watched one movie, ran the fan all night. Uh, we made sandwiches. I made us toasted sandwiches using the electric grill and the air fryer and I made popcorn in the microwave. I'm trying to think of what else we did. And that was at 90% when we first showed up. And I didn't park in the best spot. Otherwise, we'd be charging and we'd be able to do it all over again with the solar panels. They're only helping it out by, oh, 10 watts right now until the sun comes around the corner. So the Jackery is a win for the glamper. You want to build an off-grid cabin, uh, just bring it up with you camping, glamping, it does everything you could possibly need it to do. So yeah, thanks for watching. Check out Jackery, our sponsor for this video, linked in the description below. And I will say, Fowlers, Fowlers. out. <laughs> That's pretty cute.